I think the hardest question a man will ever ask themselves is, what do I do with my life? And before we can even ask that question truthfully, we must first become men. But what is a man? Is it the cigar-smoking, womanizing lone wolf who doesn't take no for an answer? Is it the soft man who turns the other cheek? Is it doing one habit over another? Is it physicality? Is it violence? Is it power? I say, find out for yourself what it means to you. Only you can walk that path, and all facts or statements on what a man is, is really an opinion. Compared to previous times in history, where what made a man a man was more well-defined, we live in a world that doesn't really care for rugged individualism. We pretend we do, but all these definitions and labels we give ourselves to feel more unique are really just boxes we put ourselves into to cover the void where a true personality would be. We have left the days of the Wild West, the days of conquest and true innovation. There are no new lands to discover, no new ideas that really change the world. We are lambs in the slaughter of the modern world. Our minds, morals, our bodies are all under attack by parasites that wish to drain us of life and ambition. Everywhere we go, something or someone wants to take our energy, whether in the form of money, of time, or of emotion. So, you might be thinking, why be a man? What's the point? We don't even know what one really is anymore. But if I ever had a definition for what it is to be a man, I'd say it is the acceptance of life. Waking up every morning and despite all the reasons not to be honest, moral or reasonable, one decides to do so anyways. Not because of reward, not because of praise. A man simply pushes forward towards a light from within. A light that can only be discovered by silence and contemplation. A light that can only be realized when you are surrounded by darkness. We cannot truly know ourselves until we are pushed up against a wall with no chance of escape. Where the only option is confrontation with the self. Where all the lies we tell ourselves lose effect, and nothing but the reality of what we are remains. It is through hardship, but also through love and joy that we forge our light, so that it may grow into a fire that burns within us in every waking moment. Reducing life to its bare nature is a form of alchemy itself. We transmute the coal we are given, and we attempt to make diamonds. A diamond's beauty and value is not because it is common, but because it is rare. Many people pretend to have changed, to be reformed, but true change and catharsis is the rarest gem of all. It takes grit, and it takes soul to withstand the waves of life and remain optimistic and moral. It is so easy to slip into darkness, and to never return. But it is within darkness, within sin and suffering, that we begin to crave the light. We begin to seek purpose and strength. We begin to develop humility and understanding. Some, however, will succumb to the darkness and never return. We see many people like this today. They are ruled by their shadow, ruled by anger and false justifications. They see oppression everywhere, they feel subjugated, they feel angry. But they have not learned one of the great lessons of life. That life is hard, and it is hard for everyone. No amount of money or luxury can save you from biology, from the elements or from oneself. They fall into the illusion of happiness and safety being out there somewhere, never seeing they are the masters of their destiny and emotions. So I will ask you, what do you fight for? Illusion or truth? Truth is the essence of God. Deceit and lies are the agents of misfortune. Just as much as cold is the absence of heat, evil alone is simply the absence of God and thus truth. But how do we know truth? This is the hardest part. We all have the innocence of the child within, and because of this, we fall for the lies we are told and buy into dysfunctional behaviors and thoughts. Most people do what they do, not because of evil, but because of innocence. The desire to be protected, to be recognized, and to be safe in some form or another can bring about the horrors of man. It seems the only way to discern truth from falsehood is to pay attention to the effect of our actions as well as the actions of others throughout history. Actions and thoughts that bring harm to oneself and or others cannot be truth. The fire within man is both the agent for change and the harbinger of destruction. So what is fueling your fire? A desire for power or the desire for force? Power and force are two different things. 
It would serve you well to meditate on the meaning. A man wields power. A coward wields force. When nobody is looking, what do you do? When you have a chance to be petty or violent towards those weaker than you, do you take it? Do you wish to dominate others? Or do you wish to bring out the potential in yourself and those around you? These are the decisions that decide which path we are pursuing. Power or force. All great men wield power. A power of character that is unmistakable when in the presence of. A person whose fingers are grazing the infinite. And a mind that flows with the rivers of time. Modern movies and music would convince you that a man is someone who hates and dominates. Who seeks wealth of material above all else. Have you ever asked why? The war of our time is not one of nations or races, but of the spirit and the direction of human consciousness. It's not hard to see that some actions and feelings are higher and stronger than others. Joy is stronger than grief, and even anger is higher than shame. With an increase in the state of consciousness, we see that certain behaviors and feelings are more in line with truth, in line with progress, and in line with God. We live in a world that's consciousness is living in anger, envy, and guilt and we can see the results of such levels of consciousness. This is why your attention is always needed, your outrage and opinion. Why sexuality is dangled in your face, violence and desire, choices and endless choices that don't really matter. Because if you are always wanting, always competing and always pointing the finger elsewhere, you can never look within. How many of us are living in hell right now, residing in fear and hatred, wants that cannot be and desires that torture our minds. This kind of mindset is beneficial to our controllers, to be distracted with the illusion of political parties and race and gender. The hidden hand wishes for our complete enslavement to the material world and its traps. Love is the only way out. Love is not just platonic. Love is attention and focus. And many people do not realize how much love there really is. With the right mind, we can see love in many things. If our minds and hearts are open, we can see that a box made with love gives off an unmistakable energy, whereas something made robotically will lack this. All things give forth an intense aliveness, but those made and cared for with love give off an unmistakable aura. We have all felt the love of a pet, the kind words of a stranger, or the caring touch of another. It is in those moments we feel at peace, and feel the force that is love, that is God. It is never separate from you. It is always within. These words are not meant, however, to deflect from our current reality. We must learn to defend ourselves in idea and in body. We must try and protect those that cannot protect themselves. Because in the end, you may abandon your body, but you must not abandon your honor. These concepts are abstract, of course, but when felt they are more real and transcendent than reality itself. If we do not stick to our word and honor ourselves and our convictions, we are nothing but beasts. If we do not protect those weaker or show mercy, how can we truly be strong? We live in a time where we are pushed to think like animals but expected to act as humans. I say accept you are both, but live for the latter. Shame and guilt are tools of the ego. Even when you blame and put yourself down, you are really juicing your ego and the illusion it provides. They did this, they did that, I am right, and they are wrong. All of this gives us a kick of sorts. Part of the process of becoming a man is to stop feeling bad for yourself. Look for the lesson and stop blaming others as though it will change anything. It is childish and self-defeating. Even if every desire you ever had was satisfied, every wish granted, you would still be left wanting. True satisfaction is not possible in this world. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, Accept the role you have here and do your best. When do we stop and take time to look at a tree? Look into the sky and feel the sun. How much do we stop all distractions and just be with the moment we are in? These things are the genius of a child and those who are among the dying. Acceptance of the present and the acknowledgement of the eternal moment. So I dare you to find out what you are through trial and error joy and pain. Be fluid, be open of heart and mind. Protect what cannot protect itself and be a servant of truth. All it takes is intention and small steps every day. 
You don't need to change the world or leave a legacy. You don't need to be rich or be feared by others. You don't need to be big or strong. You only need the fire. One that will push through all darkness and one that warms the hearts of those around you. Like a moth to a flame, purpose will find you. Happiness, joy, and love are all within you. They do not need to be found. So don't worry so much. Dream up a good life and enjoy the process. It may seem hard, but I know you can do it.